Hello and welcome to part four of my Vietnam and Cambodia adventure. If you've missed any of the previous videos, then as always, I've left a card at the top here where you can check them out. But uh, yeah, I am actually tanned again. Uh, nothing to do with on holiday. I'm actually tanned from being in England after the scorching heat wave that we're in now. Um, so it's quite quite ironic that I've got tanned back home than rather on holiday. But anyway, uh, that's not what we're talking about in this video. This video is all about the next chapter of my adventure. So let's just start the vlog. Here it is. Hello there guys and welcome to the end of day five. Uh, you catch us here at the end of the night. We're in Hoi An now. We're pretty tired so I'm gonna see how I get on with this. But let me show you how much of a fun-filled day that we've had. So we woke up in Hue, the last day there. We woke up for our motorcycle tour. Are you ready? Yay! One, two, three! so great being back on a motorcycle again. We visited a few different places like the countryside where you saw the locals working on their rice fields and then also laying it on the ground in the sun which takes around about three days to mature. And then the best rice will go straight down oh. yeah but the second rice go to the front because the little flat. So pretty much what our guide was trying to tell us is how they determine what a good grain of rice is. If it's solid, it will merely fall to the ground, which means it's a good grain of rice. And if it's light and hollow, it will just fly forwards when blown, which means it's a bad grain of rice. And they don't throw the bad ones away. Normally rice farmers have a flock of animals like chickens or pigs that they feed to. So really nothing goes to waste. It's also amazing how nearly everywhere you go in Vietnam, you constantly find rice poured all all over the roads and pavements. It's weird because it's literally just laid out everywhere and you're just expected to walk, ride or drive all over it without a care in the world. We said to our guides, you know, can it be walked on? Do the owners of the rice mind all these people walking, riding and driving all over it? And he simply said, no, nope, it's totally fine. <laughs> I said to myself at the time of seeing all that rice on the floor that how come that no one comes out and just shovel all that up, put it into their van and drive off and just steal all this rice that has just been left on the floor and just make money for themselves and when I spoke to my guide he said that no that would that would never happen or has never happened and I'm just thinking why, why hasn't it been there's always dodgy people out there if there's someone that can scam me out of a hundred pounds or take my money from an ATM machine then um, why hasn't someone thought about picking up all this uh, rice off the floor. Our guide showed us how ridiculously flooded the area can get and also how upsetting it can be too. Remember 1999, the water Whoa. here. Wow. This level is I uh, come to your hotel reception. A lot of my friend family lost member. 100% animal is gone and 100% the rice paddy, everything is swept over. We have very bad year, this one. So that was November 1999, over three meters of water, which lost the lives of people and completely lost all families and farmers, animals and livestock. To imagine it all there underwater is insane. We then also learned more on the uh, farming landscape and went to a rice farming museum. Here we learn all the different tools that are used and have been used over the years and the different practices used. There's surprisingly a lot that goes into rice farming. Surprisingly though, Vietnam is the biggest exporter of cashew nuts. They are second when it comes to rice and third in exporting coffee. So if you eat or drink any of those three things, chances are, it all comes from there. Then after that we travelled to an amazing viewpoint that looked over the Perfume River and situated here were some French bunkers and also some an American trenches that had still been left there from the war which was really cool to see that it's still there to this day.
We then finished at the nunnery where we all had a vegetarian meal and it was completely laid out by monks and was completely delicious and very very filling. Then after all of that, after more cycling around on the bikes, we made it back to our hotel to pick up our luggage and then we jetted off to Hoi An which is our next location which we are in now. But we also took a detour through Hoi Van Pass which featured in the Top Gear uh, TV show. <laughs> a stunning place and was immensely vast. Because you expect to find many things when you come to Vietnam. Communistical farming, reminders of the war, stunning food, massive heat. What you don't expect to find is a deserted ribbon of perfection. One of the best coast roads in the world. And we go round the world, but some of the stuff here. Yeah. It's about my hair all stand on end. That image really is a metaphor for Vietnam. The mountains, the coastline, the big new engineering project and the traditional fishing scene down here. With that soundtrack. It is a fabulous country, it really is. I didn't even realise I stepped in the same footsteps as Jeremy Clarkson and the gang, so that was quite nice. When we made it to our hotel, we didn't stay around for long as we were back out again exploring the town. And it turns out that this place is going to be really good for shopping because there's a plethora of shops to get involved with. So we've arrived in Hoi An and we are having a little tour guide around the city. And lots of sightseeing things to look at and I think there's a festival going on, but we're just going around the town centre so seeing what there is to find. Shops. So many shoe shops. And then after that we're going to our cookery class. About a four course little meal. Don't know how much I am of a chef so that'd be quite fun to see. But anyway let's have a look around. This is something called mango cake. It's got nothing to do with mangoes. Peanuts. Nuts and like a doughy pastry, but it's all right. If you're wanting to do shopping in Vietnam, I thoroughly recommend Hoi An, particularly for anything leather, because not only is it so cheap, and well, that's before you even haggle down the price some more, but they custom fit the product to your liking and make it for you to collect the very next day. Beckart got three pairs of custom fitted leather shoes for a fraction of the price than what they'd be in the UK. Or if you like any image of a product online, you can merely just show it to them and they'll make you an exact identical one for you. It's it's, it's just amazing. And then at the end of the day, we ended with our cookery class. So we walked around the market, picked up our local ingredients, came back to our class, cooked a four course meal Vietnamese way. We literally made everything from scratch, adding an array of different ingredients and flavours. And no, I didn't accidentally burn the ingredients. It was supposed to be like that. The chef told me to do it.
What do you think? It looks so far. Oh, that was super nice. That's only really a little bit, so I can't yeah. wait to try it. Yep, yeah, we've cut, it's so good. prepped, cooked a little bit. I don't know what else we've got to do, but so far it's good. Cooking is fun. I think that's like the world's biggest aircon I've ever seen. When we were finishing the beef noodles, I thought to myself, as much as I love my beef, I'm not eating it that rare. But little did we know this was all intentional. Adding a little bit of warm water to keep all the flavors and juices in. Because next, all the chef did was heat the stew up, then poured it all over the beef noodles, which cooked it before our very own eyes. It was incredible seeing it change color, literally instantly. I don't think I've ever seen food do that before while cooking. To be cooked in a matter of, well, millions seconds was truly remarkable. We then finished off with a creme brulee, scattering the sugar around, making it nice and even, then looking cool using a blowtorch. Yeah, <laughs> everything's cooler with a blowtorch. <laughs> <laughs> I just really wish that I was more hungry because I was still full from at that nunnery. And that's been our day. Tomorrow there's another fun filled day. But as for today, as usual, I'm shattered. I'm going to go to bed early. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. And that's the end of part four. Uh, it was another action packed episode, I thought. Um, I'm working on number five now. It's pretty much nearly done. Uh, just got to do well, the voiceover and bits to it now. But uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm off to go and work in the sun some more. Um, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. I'll probably be more tanned. Anyway, bye guys.